All right, guys, in this video, we're going to get the other cars coming down the highway. Remember, there's three types of other cars that could come towards the player that the player needs to avoid. Uh, there's like an orange sort of just old school style uh, pixel art car. There's a car that looks a little bit like a taxi and there's a car that looks like a minivan. We're going to develop all three of those cars into one class. We're going to make a new class for these cars, just like we did for the driver, because I want to add a few uh, abilities beyond what a sprite can do. So I'm starting a new class. I'm going to build this guy right up from the beginning. I'm going to call it the other car class, and it's going to be based off of our sprite class. So it starts with all of the same abilities that a sprite has, but it's going to have a few things that make it a little bit special. It's going to have a few things that make it a other car class but it's not going to be the same as a driver and that's why it's a different class uh, this time i'm not going to take the constructors from the super class i only want to have the constructor with no arguments and i'll show you why in a minute so we have our public class other car that extends sprite so it already automatically gets all of the things that a sprite has and then we're going to add some stuff to this so we'll need a constructor so it'll be public other car like I said, I only want a constructor that has no arguments. I'd like to be able to create other car objects in the uh, Crazy Highway game very simply, not have to think about um, the arguments that I would be passing as parameters to this method. I don't want there to be any. I just want to say new other car, that's it. <clears throat> now, in order to make sure that the class gets the sprite part of this class gets set up right, I want to say super to do the constructor from the sprite class. That'll set the whole sprite up. Okay, but now the thing is, I do want to have a picture for these sprites. I want to have a picture of one of the three other types of car, either the car, the taxi, or the minivan. So one of the things I want to do with this class is preload those. I'm going to say public static final image, and it's going to be equal to a new image. The first one's going to be based off of public static final image. I need to name this one. Uh, I'm going to call this one the uh, spy car. And it's going to be from the file images slash. Uh, this one's just car.png. And there's a couple more. Uh, images that I would like to be loading the taxi and the minivan. And as I get to thinking about it, I think, oh, there's a bunch of different images that I want to use as possible cars. Why not make an array of images instead of just one? So we're going to make it an array, and instead of calling it the spy, we'll call it the other cars array. Uh, since it's a public static final, I'm going to capitalize that other cars other cars array and so the first item in the array would be the uh, just simple car image and if, then if i separate that with commas i can put more than one image that i want to load for this array all right so the second one will be file images uh, taxi.png and put a comma and the third one that I'd like to load is new image, file, uh, images. And this one is minivan. Just want to check how that's spelled. Mini underscore van dot PNG. And that's the four. Oh, no semicolon on that because that's not the end of the instruction, but a semicolon after this brace bracket because that is the end of the instruction. All right, so I've created an array of images image is underlined because I need to import that. Created an array of image objects called other cars and I've loaded it with three different images. So other cars zero will be car.png, other cars one will be taxi.png, and other cars two will be the minivan. And to keep track of what uh, image is which, I'm going to make a couple of um, integer uh, constants. It's public static final Int. Uh, in the game, I'm going to call the orange car the spy. So that's zero. And public static final int uh, taxi is number one. And public static 
final int minivan. Minivan is number two. The nice thing about doing it with the array like this, I found a few more car pictures. I could incre uh, include even more variety into the uh, class, the other car class that I'm creating here with very little effort at all. I just have to add a few more constants and load a few more images. Right? And when this car gets created, I'm going to pick a random number uh, in order to decide which of the three it's supposed to be. So I'm going to give myself a random number generator for that. So public static final random random and I always call my random number generator RNG. Pull the new random. Of course, I'm going to need to import random. Right, so import that from Java Util. That'll let me pick a number for what type of car this is. And it'll be useful for me later on to actually keep track of what type of car did I just create. So I'm going to make a private integer. This is not a static and it's not final because this is a variable and it could change. A private integer and I'm going to call it type for what type of car have I created. And for now I'm just going to say well it's equal to zero. I will change that in a minute but for now I'll just have an initial value of zero. All right so when I go to construct the car after I call the sprite constructor by saying super I'm going to also pick out a new kind of car that I want. Type is going to be equal to random number generator dot next int. And I want a number between 0 and 3, not including the 3. So I say next int 3. That'll choose for me a random integer, either 0, 1, or 2. Now that I've chosen what type of car this will be, I need to set the image for it. So I'll say set image. That's a method from the sprite class. So I get to use it for free. I don't have to say how it works or anything. And I'm going to say uh, my array, other cars. And which one of the images I want from that array. So I'll use type, the random number that I just chose between zero, uh, either 0, 1, or 2. So I've just set the image for this sprite to be one of those three cars. And of course, if you remember the sprite class, when you set the image, that also sets uh, the height and the width of that image as well. So that's been done for me too. And that's all I really need to do to construct my other cars. Uh, Okay, so let's go start using them in the Crazy Highway class. Now, I want to have more than one other car on the screen usually. Usually there'll be like three or four. So I might use an array for that, but an array is not super flexible in that it always has exactly how, the same length. right? If I declare an array with five other cars, there would always be five other cars. There couldn't be a situation where there were six and it would be kind of programmatically a bit of a pain to make a situation where there was three or four. I mean, I don't have to have the array be full. I could have a counter to say how many cars there is right now and sort of keep track of that and displaying all the cars. But there's an easier way to go here for a little bit of flexibility. Uh, my character was down at the bottom. What I want to do is instead of making a private other car array, I'm actually going to make a private group. And a group in JavaFX is um, a class that can hold multiple things that get displayed on screen. So it could hold multiple other cars. It could hold multiple sprites. It could hold multiple images, which is pretty much exactly what I need. Um, and it doesn't matter how many things are in the group. The group is already built to have, be flexible in that matter. It could have nothing in the group. It could have 10 cars in the group. It could have 100. It could have three. 
and it can go up and down whenever I want to. So group seems like a thing that'll work really well for me. And I'm going to say group other cars is equal to new group. Now, right now, there's no other cars in that to get started with. We'll change that as the game starts. All right, so other cars, a new group. I'm going to add that to the, the game screen as well. So I want my background to be displayed, my player to be displayed, and I want all of the other cars that are in the group being displayed as well. That was going to go on the end of that one. All right, so now how does that going to work? Every time the game event, um, updates, I want to update my other cars. Okay. That method hasn't been created yet, so let's create that. And that would be public void. Other cars. And what's going to happen in this method is I'm going to move. Well, I got to do a wanted to do a couple of things. I'm going to want to add other cars occasionally so that they appear on the screen. I'm going to want to move any car that is there. Uh, and later on, I'll want to see if any of those cars are ready to be removed from the game. And I might take them out here as well. All right. So how can I add another car? Well, like I said, I wanted to make it really simple so I could say other car, new car is equal to new other car. And I don't have to say anything else. I just say that. And that creates me a new car that is either the spy car, the taxi, or the minivan. Right? That will be chosen when this object gets constructed. Now I want to make sure that I place this car and, and set some speed for this car. So I'll set the things uh, up for the car um, in order to get it started. So where do I want to place this car? I want the new car to be eh, just slightly off screen. So I would like the new car to have a position, set position. Uh, I'm going to set the X and the Y here. Um, X wise, I would like the new position to be between 80 and remember it was 370 minus the width of the new car. Okay, I want a random number in that range and I kind of worked out how to calculate that random number ahead of time here. And I figured out that if I did 335 minus the new car's width, uh, and I'm putting in the new car's width because the minivan is slightly wider than the other two. Uh, so the width of the car is not always the same depending on the image. So if I say 335, that's the full width of the road minus the width of the car because I want, I want to go outside of the road with this car. And I'm going to say times math.random. And to that, I'm going to add 80 because I want it to be like inside the left shoulder of the road and inside the right shoulder of the road. Right? If I make that calculation, I'll get them at random places throughout the road. And then for the um, Y position of the car, I just want it to be just off screen. So I'll say it's negative uh, the new car's height. And that'll push me just off the top edge of the screen. Okay, and... I want to make sure that this car has some speed and I want all the new cars to have a little bit of variety to their speed just to make the game more interesting. So I'm going to set the velocity in the Y direction. They're not going to move back and forth in the X direction right now. That's going to be, uh, I, I found that if I did a speed of 200 times math.random, a random number with a range of 200 and a minimum value of 300. All right, so I'm going to be picking random numbers between 300 and 500. And that made for sort of nice speeds to the car. You could bump those around a little bit if you wanted them to go a bit faster or a bit slower. I just found that that felt nice to me. All right. Now that I've set up the position for the new car and the speed for the new car, all I need to do is say other cars, the name of my group, 
I'm get children. Not add the new car. <clears throat> All right, so this adds a new car. Now there's going to be a bit of an issue with this. See if you can think right now, why is that going to be a bit of a problem? And when I run it, you'll see what the problem is. All right. And the other thing that I need to do in the update cars method is that I need to move all the cars forward. So somehow I need to get access to a list of all the cars that are in the other cars group, move each one of them down the screen just a little bit. All right. So what I want to do in order to do that is to say uh, for integer I, I'm going to start at zero. I is going to be less than other cars, the group, dot, uh, get children. Children is kind of the list of stuff. Uh, notice the type there for get children is observable list. And I get the children, and then I can say, what's the size of that observable list? So I'll be able to count through every car on the list. And I go I plus plus. And now here, what I want to do is say, okay, first of all, to make this a little bit easier to work with, I'm going to have other car, an other car type variable. I'm just going to call it car. And that's going to be equal to pick out of this uh, group one of the items that's in the list. And specifically, it's going to be a other car type object. So I'm going to load it from the other cars group, get children. And I can say get the item at index i in the list. So works very similar to an array. I can say I want the car in position 0. I want the car in position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to how many there is in the list. This lets me pick out just one car from the list. And now what do I want to do with that? I want that car to get updated based on how much time has passed. So I want elapsed time. Uh, I notice I didn't pass that as a variable to myself, so I better do that, double elapsed time. Okay. Now that should move each car in the, in the group forward just a little bit. Okay, so and now, of course, and then I need the variable as well. Right? Everything in the game update is based on how much time has gone by. So update the background, update the player, update the other cars. All right. And I run this. We're going to see why this is not quite done. But let's see what happens. So when I press space, it's going to start adding other cars. That's a lot of other cars, right? And it's just adding every uh, time the game update happens, it's adding one new car. That's way too many. I, I, there's no way I could avoid any of that mess. So what we need to do instead is to make a timer for that and only add them sometimes, not every single time. So we're going to make a private double uh, new car timer and I'm going to set it to one second to begin with so new car timer is one second okay and for the updating of other cars if the new t new car timer is less than zero then I'll do this. Now I started it at one second, right? So it's not less than zero right now. So what should I do if it's above zero? If it's above zero, then the new car timer, I will subtract from that however much time has elapsed. Okay, that's usually going to be less than one second, so like a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second. So most of the time I'll be just subtracting from the new car timer and then eventually it will get down below zero after about a second has passed and I'll add a new car and then I reset the timer. 
I don't want to always have it one second because that's a little bit predictable. But I found that anything between zero and a full second seemed to work. Not zero all the time. Zero all the time obviously wasn't very good. But if I just pick a math.random, that picks a number somewhere between zero and one. And I actually found that that works pretty well. So if I run that now, <clears throat> and press space to start. It takes about a second. There's the first car. Now they come out at semi-regular intervals. I'm driving around like I have to avoid them, but I don't yet. There's no collision detection. Semi-regular intervals, but still enough, right? 